Hello, hello, I'm Vince, Jala and Daniel. Good, ev good afternoon, everybody. Mark, good to have you here. Thanks for joining me. Aaron, <laughs> my buddy Aaron. Hey, Aaron, I just sent you some uh, some stuff. Did you did you get it yet? Just just want to make sure. Drew, my friend. Hello, good to have you back, Drew. Thanks for joining me on a Sunday. Can you guys hear me? Whoa, I got a net. Uh, <laughs> Corey. Okay, Aaron, good. That's great. Thanks. Uh, good to know you got it. All right, guys. So today, uh, I just want to come on and uh, talk really quick about, you know, maybe indoor gardening since this is uh, still winter. And then uh, the Cowboys is going to play at 3 p.m., so uh, perfect time. I'm going to get off in a little bit to watch the game. <laughs> Jimmy, hello, hello. Alex is from Texas. Good to have you, my friend. We're neighbors. Okay, Yvette, thank you for confirming. Um, yeah, okay, so, you know, as, as always, I, this is the time that I reserve so that I can answer all the questions you guys have, you know, or maybe comments I didn't answer or couldn't, couldn't get to. And uh, you know what, today we're gonna do something very special, guys. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you guys how I refill uh, my small hydroponic plants. I'm going to do it live so you can see, you know, so a lot of people, uh, you know, always ask, uh, hey, Kang, when you grow plants in systems like these, how often do you refill and, um, uh, you know, how much to refill? So that is, uh, you know, the question that get asked so often. I mean, like all the time, you know. And so I figured I'll just put dude right here and, and, you know, show it to you live so you can see exactly what's happening. You see? So, I, of course, you're going to get a little algae. That's just natural. It's, you're always going to get that. Uh, that's because uh, anytime a light can penetrate through, you're going to get some kind of algae. So clean it out every so often and it wouldn't be a problem. And so uh, here, it, it, this is a water bottle that I just cut. And it has a little groove right here where the, the net cup kind of float right here. And then here, these this sections here, these are the air roots. And then this section here is the water roots. So when, when I have my nutrients, right now it's empty, see? So when, when it gets this big, the plant is going to drink like a, every three days or something. It's going to drink up the whole thing. And so, uh, you know... I usually let it go low before I refill, but now um, it's, it's basically completely all the way done. I mean, there's no water left in here and the plant is still kind of fresh. And that's because it just ran out of water. So after it running out of water, it, it'll stay alive for like a, you know, a few, a few hours, you know, like five, six hours before it, it actually starts to wither. Okay, so I mix my, my nutrients by the gallon and I save it and, and the gallon can last, you know, two weeks, three weeks, it doesn't matter. So anytime you use it, just shake it up a little bit. And then, uh, you know, here I'm gonna show you how I refill. You see, I'm gonna refill to around right here. You see that? That's my water level right here because this is the air section and if you refill all the way to here your plant is going to drown because the air root is being covered it's not going to be able to breathe so it's going to die so refill down to here when the water level is, is either low or completely gone uh, it's better for her to have it completely gone uh, you know by pouring it out don't let it completely gone drying out because when it drying out would cause the roots to dry up a little bit so don't don't let the thing dry up all the way for too long because then your your your, your roots down here 
will be very, very dry and it could potentially kill the roots and it, it could die. So um, don't let it dry out like I did and uh, it should be okay. If you have water left to around right here, which is good, just pour that out. Don't, don't mix it back in because then you, 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 know, you want fresh nutrients. And that, that is exactly how I refill it and then put it back under your light and you're all set to go. Uh, girl next door, thank you so much for the donation. Uh, let's see, your message is, my, my monk friend taught me how to pickle mustard green. She also added a couple of teaspoon of cooked rice. Uh, you know what, that's interesting because I have never had cooked rice before. I, I think I should look it up because that sounds, you know, really cool. Uh, can you use this recipe on other greens? Uh, you know what? I don't know because I only tried it on mustard greens. And the reason mustard green has uh, has this chemical reaction to salt and, uh, you know, just salt itself with the, with the greens, somehow there's a reaction that caused the, 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 you know, the fermentation to happen and the, the, the greens to become sour. I, you know, that's, it's just something that I really don't know. I just learned it from my parents. I haven't done it with anything else except mustard greens. But there's there's so many ways to make the, the pickled mustard greens. And the way I showed it is, is I wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to follow. So once you once you get the easy recipe down that I just I showed, you can always tweak it, you know, and that's the best. Yeah, it's called lacto fermentation. Thank you, Scott. And uh you know, you, once you get the easy recipe down, you can tweak it. You know, you can add sugar. You can add a little bit of um, uh, onions. People, some, sometimes people add white onions to it. And uh, it, it's just so awesome. You know, just salt by itself with the mustard greens is all you need to make the mustard greens. Uh, you know, I, I, it's just as simple as it can get, which is amazing. So, uh, yeah, you know, you mentioned that two tablespoons of cooked rice. Um, you know what? I've never done that before, but I want to. I want to try it. I'm gonna look it up and see if I can do it. <laughs> if, if there's a difference, and also, you know, the, the 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 here's another thing. You know, in Vietnam is divided like north and south, right? So people in the further north region, when they make when they make the pickled mustard greens, they add sugar. You know, they, theirs is a little sweet. Uh, we're from the further south, my parents. So w when we make it. We make it salty, so I get. You know, it depends on where you live. Uh, you know, it's it's a little bit different. So sugar is what makes the you know um, the difference in in the two different places. All right, guys. So I, I showed you guys how to refill the little the little systems. Look at that, guys! Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I just love these things. I mean, the plant this little, but look at how many pods on there, and look at this. These are full size pods too. They're not they're not small. Look at look how big this is. It's like the size of my my pointing finger. So, you know, even the small size plant can produce the regular size pod. So, um, a lot of the times when you see uh, plants that produce mini size pods, and the reason for that is because your plant is stressed out. When it's stressed out, it's produced little little pods. So, when when you see that happening, there's some imbalance in either your nutrients level or something that the plant is not happy. And normally it's the root. The root is the biggest uh, area where you have to focus because the, if, the, if the plants have root problems, your plants are going to stress. It's not going to produce well and it's going to produce little tiny fruits or maybe it will drop all the flowers, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so let's see uh, any questions that I have missed. Um, okay, here, Brenton, uh, love your videos on hydroponic cucumbers and melons. Have you tried any uh, or had success with summer or winter squash? Assuming it's similar. You know what? I have tried squash, um, squash or zucchini. I think they're the same, right? <laughs> I, I tried squash and zucchini. Oh man, the zucchini grow massive. They, they, they drink so much. So um, some, sometimes when I grow, you know, plants that, that becomes such a big hassle and so much work, like, like zucchini, for example, uh, cabbages, you know, they, they, they just grow so massively huge 
and they start to drink so much that you know you you're gonna have to like constant refills and it becomes a pain you know but yes i have tried squash or zucchini and uh yeah you can grow amazing looking zucchini in in, in hydroponic systems even cracky systems guys uh dwc works well cracky works well so um yeah you know I think in the future, I'm going to make an episode called Will It Cracky or something like that. <laughs> and then, you know, and then the, you guys can pick which plants to grow next. So I'll, I'll just choose whatever the audience pick and then I'll just grow that to see if that if it will work. I think that I think that's going to be really fun. Uh, how do those pods taste when fully ripe or unripe? Are you asking about these pods right here? Uh, these pots here, they taste very much the same as uh, the soily grown one. Uh, I, I think uh, another, grown in them in hydroponic, they actually taste a lot hotter. Uh, believe it or not, I, I've tried it so many times. I, I grow two plants, one in soil, one in hydroponic. And the hydroponic ones, man, they are so much spicier. I think the reason is um, uh, they always... They don't lack nutrients, you know, they, there's always available nutrients for them to take up. Um, when you grow them in soil, uh, it, you know, it, it very much depends on your soil mixture. So if you have, uh, you know, inadequate uh, nutrition or, you know, nutrients for the plants in the soil, like, like if it is lacking calcium, phosphorus, potassium or whatever, then the peppers may not, you know, taste to its full potential okay because I, I have done some experiments I, I didn't record it very well but I grow two plants uh, in in different mixture and one of it I actually uh, you know deprived the plant a little bit and then it came out no heat crazy you can you can grow the same pepper variety in two different places depending on you know your soil mixture sometimes if it's lacking it'll come out without any heat at all and then when you take the same pods and take the seeds out of it and you grow it again then the heat comes right back <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out because um, I tested it like a, a few times already I grew a chocolate scotch bonnet it's supposed to be a very hot variety and then somehow I grew it and it didn't have any heat. So I took the one that didn't have any heat. I took the seeds out of that pod. I grew it in hydroponic. Oh my God, it tore me up. It's, it is so hot. It's crazy. Yes, Mighty, the, the Niners are playing the Cowboys today. I mentioned it last week. I'm, I love the 49ers. And I also love the Cowboys. But if the Cowboys are playing the Niners, my heart goes to the Cowboys. <laughs> so yes, go Cowboys. Today, we're going to root for the Cowboys. <laughs> All right, guys, cheers. Happy Sunday. Uh, if you guys are watching the game later, uh, you know, cheers for the Cowboys with me. We, we need the win. <laughs> okay, one another thing, guys. This is a very uh, interesting thing that I've done over the last four years. So here is my Cuban oregano. I grew this plant in soil four years ago. And every year, you know, because these plants are, are they're not perennial, they're, you know, they're annual. So every season they'll die during the winter time. So I love this plant so much that before it dies, I take cuttings and I take them inside. I take like four, five, six cuttings. I, I put them inside. I put them in the bottle like this. Just plain water, nothing else. There's just plain water. And it will live in here for, you know, all these months, like four or five months until, until it's hot again. And then I'll take it outside and I'll grow it to a full plant. And then when sun, uh, winter arrives again, I'll, I'll repeat the process. I cut it, take it inside. This is plain water. There's nothing else to it. Just put it in there, plain water, and it, it will root and it will stay alive in the water. No nutrients, no nothing. It just stays alive and then plant it outside. So I have done that for four years. So I think you can do this perpetually forever. So there, there's, you know, every time you cut it, the plants start over. So it, it's almost like uh, you're giving it a new life, like rejuvenate, you know, make it young again. So it's forever and ever and ever. I, I think that's the case because this is the fourth year that I've done this. 
And so I think I will continue to do this to see how many years I can keep the same plan alive. And I think based on the four years experience, I think this could be done perpetually, infinitely. So uh, if you guys have never done that before, uh, try it out. Cuban oregano or any kind of herb like um, uh, basil and mint. Basil and mint worked as well, but I haven't done basil and mint uh, for four years. This is the only plant that I've done for four years because I love this plant, guys. The, this is called um, Cuban oregano, but I think, uh, you know, the, the nickname for these is a uh, um, um, Vix plant because it tastes like Vix NyQuil and um, smells amazing. I, I love this plant. It's so pretty, too. And so uh, it produces lots of leaves. And, uh, you know, like if you, if you have a cold or you have sore throat, you crush the leaves in honey and then, you know, add some water and a little bit of lime. It'll suit your throat. I, I love I love uh, the plant. A lily. <laughs> Boo, the cowboys. No. <laughs> Go, cowboys. <laughs> uh, have you ever grown or used rosemary? Yes, I grow rosemary all over the yard. I, I, I started with one plant. Now I have like six or seven plants because I propagated them. Uh, they they seem to be perennial in Texas. They, they just, you know, die back and kind of like die back a little bit in the wintertime. And then in the spring, they come right back. They're very cold hardy. So last year we had the snow get in, which is that the big, huge snowstorm that killed everything in my garden. But the rosemary was fine. <laughs> the rosemary was fine. And you know what else is fine? The um, uh, what was that? A lavender. Lavender also uh, grows really well. Uh, cowboys are being bedding slip. <laughs> yeah, they, they need the win. I mean, we're so inconsistent. I mean, the way that we beat the, the Eagles last week. That is how we should play today. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that we can do pull it off because uh, uh, it seems to me that this is uh, this has been our best year in a long time. So maybe it, it could be our, our you know our chance to uh, make it all the way. But you know, cross my fingers. Okay, uh, clone a few tomato tomatoes before, and yeah, tomatoes are really easy to cl to uh, to propagate and clone. Guys, if you are looking for a plant that will give you 100% success rate when you propagate, tomato is the is the plant. You you can just cut off a branch, uh, cut off a sucker. You know, it doesn't matter except except leaves. You can't propagate the leaves. It has to be a branch. It had to be a branch, or it had to be a sucker. Sucker is better because you know it's 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 uh, it's shorter and it has nodes, and when it propagates, it propagates really well and it grows into a, a whole new plant. Um, yeah, favorite grow aside from peppers. Uh, what is my favorite thing to grow beside peppers inside? Uh, I would say Japanese melons. I love growing Japanese melons. Uh, they, uh, you know, they're so amazing. I, I don't, I don't know how, but uh, when I grow them in hydroponic, they taste so sweet. They're so sweet, and they're they're, they're just. I mean, they're so fragrant and it's amazing. So um, I'm going to do it again this year. So if you haven't seen my, my video on Japanese melons before, make sure you check it out because I'm going to do it again next year. Uh, yeah, Jason, I want to go to the Dallas games too. It's, they're, they're, you know, Dallas has an amazing stadium, but... Um, Unfortunately, we, we're not going to be able to go for a long time. <laughs> uh, have I grown micro tomato? Yes, I think the tiny Tim or is it tiny Tim or tiny Tom? Tiny Tim, I think. Those are the the, the, the little tomatoes that I grow. I think that's the only micro variety that I've grown. Very interesting plant. They're they're tiny, but they produce pretty well. Um, I think when you buy the Arrow Garden, it comes with with the micro tiny Tom tomato. Jimmy, Mr. Steelers. Hey, I think Steelers are playing. Who, who are they playing? The Steelers are playing the Chiefs or, or who are, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> go Steelers. <laughs> uh, can melon be grown in small spaces? Um, it depends on how small you're talking about. Like a, you can grow melons in a, in a two by two tent. It just requires a little trimming. 
But, the, you know, the thing with melon is when you grow melons, you can't let them grow out of control, um, especially in hydroponic. For one, if they grow out of control, they're going to grow a lot of vines and they're going to suck up the nutrients very fast. That's one. And then two, if you allow too many vines to grow, they will produce too many fruits and then the fruits will be tiny. So you don't want that. So normally what I do is I grow a melon and I would only allow maybe two fruits per plant. And that is plenty enough. Uh, you know, it saves me on having to refill the water all, all the time. And then also it allows the plant to produce all, you know, use all of the energy to just two fruits instead of many fruits. And then you get bigger fruits. So, yeah. Observe nature. Yes, football and cane again. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> I'm happy to hear you're splitting, uh, you know, my, your time between, between us. <laughs> have i tried growing wasabi you know what i looked into growing wasabi but uh, i have not done it because i think it's very very difficult but wasabi is uh, is very picky it has to it has to grow in uh, sort of like a very cool wa running water running areas i think it has to have running water but um, maybe there's a way to kind of mimic it. And also it takes a long time, you know. So I, even if I'm able to mimic the conditions in Texas, it's just so hot that I, I would not be able to mimic the condition for, for too long. And then, you know, the, it wouldn't work out well for the wasabi. But yeah, that is something that I'm very interested in growing. Uh, have I smoked my cigar? Yes, um, Mighty, I did try it. And uh, I think I didn't roll it correctly. So the draw is very difficult. Or, or, or you know, it, it, it's the way you roll a cigar is, uh, I think they call it the symphony style, where you have, uh, you know, you roll the inner tube and it, it, it's like a, those symphony organs. And I have not perfected it and I really don't even know how to do it. I try to copy it, but it's very difficult. So yeah, I might have to try that again. Oh, you know, speaking of cigar, let me show you guys something. Look at this, guys. I grow two plants of, of tobacco. And look at this, man. They they sell these here like 15 seeds for like $4 or something like, you know, 15, maybe not 15, but like 100 seeds. But 100 seeds are so small that it looks like, you know, 10, 15 seeds. Anybody can guess how many seeds there are in here? Just take a wild guess. <laughs> Look at this. This is from one plant, and I, don't, I only harvest half of the plant. Uh, the rest I just threw away because there's just so many seeds. Uh, Steve Rogers, I think you're very close. 20 million. <laughs> this, is, this is how many there are. <laughs> I, think that, I think this is in the million seeds right here. There's so many in here. It's, it's crazy. No, I, definitely more than 5,000. This is, it, it's probably like 100,000. <laughs> but, but all that is from, uh, from one plant. It's, it's crazy. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to make a lot of money, grow tobacco and sell the seeds. <laughs> you know, and, and harvesting tobacco seeds is so much easier than everything else. It's so easy. You get the pot, you crush it into a colander, you know, a tiny colander, and then the seeds will pour out into a, you know, like a container, and then you just shake it and blow the, the, the stuff off, and then this is what you get. I did this all manually. I crushed the seeds into a colander, and then it, it ca you know, with tiny holes, and then uh, it catches the seeds. The seeds are stronger than the, the flakes, and then you just go outside, you just shake the, the plate and you you blow at it and all the flakes will fly off and you have clean harvest like this this is all manually done it's so easy so yeah the process of collecting tobacco seeds is very very simple and um yeah i mean profits are, are i think is much better than um than growing peppers because uh, peppers when you cut the seeds out you know, you got to wear gloves and then each pepper is like it yields maybe five to 20 seeds, sometimes more depending on variety. 
and then you got to put it somewhere you got to dry it and then you you pretend you touch your eyes and get hurt and all that stuff and uh you got to collect a bunch of peppers to get enough seeds to sell but tobacco seeds one plant you can sell it for the entire four or five years <laughs> Drew, thank you so much, my friend, for the donation. Let's see your question. I want to trim my purple gold scorpion. Uh, I can bring in my grow room for the winter. Do I need to keep any leaves on the plant when I cut? Uh, you want to keep a few leaves at, at, if possible because, you know, the, the leaves is, is what um, allows the, the plant to take in energy and stuff like that. So, you know, leave a few leaves. Uh, sometimes when I cut it down, I cut everything down. But, uh, you know, it's always nice to leave just a few leaves, but you want to cut all of the tip, you know, the all of the, the growing tip back. Just leave a, a few bottom leaves. Uh, also, the less amount of leaves, the easier it is for you to spot problems. Like if you have a pest, you can see it easier. Uh, also, before you take it inside, you want to spray down the plant because, you know, bugs or like aphids are very hard to see, mites and stuff like that. They'll hitchhike and they'll go inside. And when you go inside, it gets warm, they multiply. Uh, another good thing to do is wash off the entire plant. Uh, wash off the soil that you, that, that you bring from outside because it could introduce problems into your tent. So wash those all off and then freshly uh, use new soil that, that, you, that you make um, that you are almost sure that there's no fungus gnats. Uh, uh, soil that are in, in an enclosed bag. If the bag has holes in it and stuff like that, like don't don't use those. Uh, use uh, like like for example, I I bought the uh, the seed starting mix or seed mixture of the Pro Mix. Pro Mix, you know, the one that is a square bag and it has a, like a handle. And those seems to be really nice because the bags are always really tough and they're always enclosed. And then you know you don't you don't get gnats. Uh, from using those, or, or you don't get it easily. So uh, the, the the kind of bags that you see at Home Depot, like they, they throw it all over the place and stuff like that, and it has holes and stuff like that, don't buy those uh, if you're gonna bring them in your tent, because then you can introduce fungus gnats. Fungus gnats is a, is a huge problem. Uh, so, so yeah, try to prevent from that. But yeah, I hope that answers your question, my friend. Uh, Michael, thank you. Michael Soro. <laughs> you know, Soro is one of my favorite plants to grow. Thank you. Um, is four inch pot enough or should I use six inch pots for peppers? Uh, four inch is enough, six is better because um, as you can see, peppers can grow as small as you want. You see here, this is a, a water bottle. So uh, the smaller the container, the smaller the plant is going to grow. The larger the container, the larger the plant is going to grow. Uh, that is in most cases. Uh, but there are certain varieties that are, that are that are small, like uh, the sangria, for example. They they are a very small growing plant, so you can grow them in one gallon or three gallons, and they're perfect. If you put them in ten gallons, it makes no sense because they're not gonna they're not gonna utilize the space as well as uh, like a Scotch bonnet or a Reaper or a ghost plant. Those variety you need at least five gallons because they can grow massive. So yeah, uh, the, the you know small container, your plant is going to grow smaller. A large container, and of course, depends on variety. Uh, Rich, the pepper guru, my friend, thank you for joining me on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Guys, the pepper guru, uh, you know, it, 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 he is the pepper guru. So um, uh, make sure you check out his channel. Uh, he also has a you know Facebook page and stuff like that. I think he's also in, part of a really large community uh, of pepper people. So uh, make sure you join the pepper guru. I mean, he don't have the guru for no reason. He's very very uh, well versed in in, um, in in peppers. So uh, if you want some useful information about growing peppers, the pepper guru is a, is a great resource. Yeah, Drew. So it, yes, if you spray it down, uh, it's it's great. And then uh, you know, wash off the root is also great because uh, I think those people that have grown uh, plants inside, we all know that man. You know, once you bring the pest inside, 
it's going to be a nightmare. Um, it's treatable, but then it's going to be very difficult because you got to shift things around. You got to move things outside. You got to separate things. Oh man, it's going to be a mess. So yeah, the best thing to do is uh, apply preventive measure. Mr. Jimmy Pickle, thank you so much, my friend, for the donation. <laughs> it's always good to have you on the channel. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure what uh, Andrew is asking, why you hate each other so much. Is there is there something else I missed? <laughs> Uh, yes, guys, um, <laughs> the, the Cowboys is on for, for people who are talking about sports. Cowboys is going to play, I think, at 3 p.m. Central Time. So, yeah, that's going to be uh, where I'll be going next after this. I'll be watching the Cowboys game and praying that we win because we need this. <laughs> we, we need the 49 is a tough team to beat. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm praying for my Cowboys. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for those that haven't seen my, my little tiny plant, I, I, I'll show you guys again. See it? These are tiny growths. So this, these are really fun winter projects, guys. So, uh, you know, if you haven't never done it before, definitely check it out. It's very easy. It's just water bottle and a two-inch net cup and a rock wool cube. Put a seed in there. And then, uh, you know, eventually they will start to grow. And then and the, the mix... I'll show you my mixture. This is a gallon of water, right? All I do is I put a gallon of water, then I put five milliliter of uh, either the Aragard nutrients or uh, Dynagrow, the Dynagrow 795 series, just five milliliter per gallon of water, mix it up, and then you're good to go. And then uh, if, if you wanna get a little bit more technical and uh, feed your plant better, once they get to fruiting stage, you just uh, add a little bit of cow cow mag. Cow mag uh, does help the plant, um, you know, produce beautifully. Uh, it helps uh, the plant stick, uh, you know, get the fruits to stick. It also keeps the plant healthy because sometimes a lot of times when the, there are certain nutrients that that lack in the calcium and magnesium, so it, you know peppers love that when, once they're starting to uh, to produce a lot of pods. So I, I find that cow mag really is is a good supplement, you know, to add to, um, you know, your mixture once the plants, are, you know, are, are producing fruits. So uh, usually for a one gallon of water, I use around, you know, three to five milliliter of cow mag. And that's all you need. A, a little bit goes a long way. Uh, it's, it's always best to go less if you're not sure than to go more. Uh, and, you know, growing peppers, they're, they're very picky when, when you feed them too much. But if you feed them a little less, it's okay. So, uh, you know, when growing peppers, it's always, if you're not sure, go less. And, and you'll be okay. You'll be fine. Cheers, everybody. Happy Sunday. All right, uh, Junior tried your solution for hydroponic nutrients, and my plants are growing strong and fast. Learned a lot from you. Go Cowboys! Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Pray for my Cowboys today. We need we need this win. Uh, for those that are 49er fans, go 49ers too. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, I've been talking for a while. I, you know, sorry if I missed uh, a lot of your questions. Yeah, if, you know, uh, if you're intimidated by hydroponic, it's not it's not very difficult. So um, the 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 biggest obstacle is trying it out. Yeah. So once you try it out, uh, you're gonna see that it's 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 very simple. And you know, actually, by growing plants in hydroponic, it teaches me a lot about growing plants in soil. 
because there's different ways to look at things and then you can apply what you'd learn in hydroponic to soil you know because soil there, there is also npk in the soil too and there's also phing ph balancing the soil as well you know bef bef you know a long time ago i did not know all of this so uh, you know learning a lot of stuff from hydroponic I, I apply some of the things I know when I grow in, in soil. Like, uh, you know, like for example, if you want to trim the plants, you know, when to trim the plants and how much to trim and what to do to, to you know, help it come back to life and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, Kareen, yes, I'm really intimidated by hydroponics. Yes, that's what I'm, I'm here to tell you that don't be intimidated, it's very, very simple. Um, I think when growing hydroponics, the most intimidating thing about growing hydroponic is probably choosing the right light setup because, you know, there's a millions of different options out there. What is the best and what, how would that work in, in for all the, the things that you want to do? Like, can you grow vegetables? Can you grow peppers? Can you grow fruiting plants? And um, so what I would recommend to you is uh, choose a, a light setup that has a, a full spectrum because you never know when you're going to grow peppers and tomatoes, right? So um, full spectrum lighting, what that means is it will allow you to grow vegetative plants and fruiting plants. And uh, lighting is so important because, uh, you know, insufficient lighting or light that are not strong enough for the plants that you're growing could affect how it grows. So um, the full spectrum, meaning, you know, it has the blue lights, uh, the red lights, you know, stuff like that. So basically you can grow fruiting plants and vegetative plants. So um, I think most plants these days, they, they, they're they all full spectrum. They don't do the vegetative light anymore and then separate from the, the, the bloom lights. Uh, there's, there's light options where you can actually turn off the bloom at a certain time or turn on the bloom at a certain time. So um, it, it's gotten a lot easier. And do you need a grow tent for hydroponic? Yeah, you know, grow tents are great. Uh, for, the reason is it, it helps you, you know, uh, keep your plants enclosed. So what that means is, it, it, you know, if you have uh, stuff, like, for example, my garage, I have my plants in the garage, right? And every time I open the garage, the wind would just blow into the garage. And what that means is if I don't have the grow tent, then it'll grow, it blow dirt and all this stuff into the tent. <laughs> so uh, a tent is good for many reasons. You know, it can protect the plants from you know whatever is around it. Uh, also, it has reflective you know ma material, so the light can bounce off each other you know of the walls, and it provides a little bit of light for the plant on the side and the bottom. So those reflective materials are actually pretty important. Uh, I, I think it also keeps the heat in. Uh, you know, to help keep the, pl the your plants warm in, in the wintertime. So the, it, it, it does a, a bunch of other things. But uh, no, you don't need a, uh, a tent because, say, for example, I grow I grow plants in the uh, in my Aragorn. The Aragorn is basically just a tub of water at the bottom and the light at the top. I mean, there's nothing enclosing it. So, yeah, you don't need it. But if you have something like a tent surrounding it with those reflective material, it actually helps bounce lights back and forth, so it, it does uh, enhance it a little bit. Um, it also keeps, you know, everything in, in, a, in an environment where you can control, and then if you have your fan, it doesn't just blow out and, and gone. It can circulate and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Fans are very important in grow tent. Yes, Mr. Jimmy, you're right. A, grow, a, a, a fan serves many purposes. Uh, one, it circulates air around the tent but it also keeps the you know sometimes when you grow uh, plants in hydroponic do you notice that sometimes the leaves is very wet at the top you know because the plant would suck the leaves up and it, it tried to expel the leaf uh, you know expel the water off a leaf uh, and then it, it sometimes it just collects and then and that and then the, and then another leaf was would sit on top of it and that could cause fungus and stuff like that to grow so the fan can kind of blow and circulate the air and clean up those uh those excess water dry it up before it can cause problems to your leaves 
So yeah, a fan is very important. And then another thing a fan is important is a fan can blow down to your grow light to keep it cool, just like a, a computer CPU fan. So inside my tent, I have a fan that blows right down to my uh, my my light because the light does get hot sometimes. It can get very hot. So with a fan on top of it, blowing down and also circulating air, it helps keep your light cool, and uh, you know it keep it helps the longevity of your of your grow light as well. So um, yes, definitely a fan is very very good to have. Uh, is there an ideal temperature range to aim for? Yes, there is absolutely an, an ideal temperature for peppers uh, throughout the whole cycle. If you can keep it around seventy degrees to 75 degrees. That would be perfect. Uh, towards the end of the cycle of the pepper, they do prefer lower temperature, like when they start to fruiting and towards the end of the cycle, uh, you can keep it lower, like uh, to the 60 and, and even cooler if you want to, like 55 degrees. And those cooler temperature actually forces the plant to go into uh, production mode. <laughs> yeah, so uh, temperature does a lot for, for plants. Because you know, it, it, you know, it naturally plants grow with the season, right? So with the the beginning, the cool season, the plants that's when you start, and then as it gets hot, it begins to grow big, and then it, it gets towards the end of the season, it gets cooler, and the plants will know that I need to produce as much as I can before I die because winter is around the corner. So if you can mimic that in your tent, that would be great for for the plant because you you you're matching the season. So towards the end of the season, you want the temperature to be cooler so that your plants can go into production mode. Uh, Joe, plants keep getting uh, what? Uh, keep the plants from getting leggy? Yes, uh, I did a video on that actually. The reason your plant is leggy is because the intensity of your light is is not strong enough. So when the light is not strong enough you tend to see that the plant was stretched and stretched and stretched and trying to look for it. And so each each uh, each each node between another node is really long. Like this is a node right here and the next node is here. That's because the plant is stretching so that it can get the intensity of the light. So when you see that happens, it's either you need to buy a new grow light or you need to lower the light onto the pep, onto the plant itself. So uh, that's the reason. So if you can lower the plant or in, increase the intensity that will reduce your plants from being leggy uh, what is my favorite cross of all time i would say the my favorite crosses of all time would be the the you know the lemon starburst and the cousins um lemon starburst scarlet rose and the peach darkest though that is my most favorite crosses of all time the reason is, you know, I made it. That's one. And also, it tastes very good. And it's beautiful. And, you know, I have this, this you know, I, I just love beautiful peppers. <laughs> like, colors, taste, the, the way it looks, and, uh, you know, all the, all the stuff about it. So, the, you know, that is my one of my favorite of all time. Uh, another favorite of mine, I would say the Jay's Peach Ghost Scorpion. For some reason, I, I love that variety. It's it's uh, it's very beautiful. It's very productive. It tastes great, and man, the heat is amazing. It, it has very good heat. The Pepper Rangers, my friend, good to have you here. Thanks for joining me. So yeah, the, those are two of my favorite variety of all time, probably. And then recently, I grew the Jay's Peach Ghost crossed with a Primo. Guys, that thing is so pretty. I love that variety. Uh, it is crazy hot, too, uh, but it's also very pretty. So that's, uh, that's one of the, uh, the variety that is going to be on my next year grow list or this year grow list. So I'll be growing that. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you, you know, look it up. It, it's very cool. You should grow it. Yes, GTF. I I agree with you, my friend. The the Jay's Peach Ghost is an amazing variety. It's it's awesome. It's just a very well rounded peppers. It has the heat, it has the looks, and it has the flavor. 
And uh, the red cousin to that, I like the red one too, but I don't like to eat it raw. The red one is just too perfumey. It has this really floral aroma that that could be a little bit too much for some people like me. But um, uh, check out the Pink Reaper and Peach. Pink Peach and Pement Leopard. Never heard of that. I, I should check it out. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see. Mike, uh, do you top every bottle of pepper or only if it gets too tall? Um, you know what? I don't top every bottle of pepper. Uh, but yes, you're right. If it gets too tall and I need to control it, then I would top it. But um, I don't top every single one of them. Uh, you know, if, if like, say, for example, I grow them in a, in a contained space, and if they grow outside of the space, I just trim around it to, to keep it contained. But there's there's certain plants that I do top just to keep it small because they can grow too much. Like, for example, if I grow like a super hot in my uh, arrow garden, if I don't top those things, they, they will just go out of control. It's just it's just hard to keep them in, in, in their center area because they just grow so much. And so when I grow super hot in, in arrow garden or, or similar containers like that, Yes, I do top them just to keep them, you know, compact. Uh, Dennis, uh, what do you think about the sugar rush peach uh, or the peachadu pepper? Uh, you know what? I've, I've had both of those and I grow sugar rush peach for many seasons. Um, it is a great variety. First, I love sugar rush peach. Uh, if you grow sugar rush peach, you're going to have to have a lot of patience because, man, those things, I think of all the variety that I grow, the sugar rush peach is one of those variety that takes forever to ripe. <laughs> so, you know, try to start those early because, man, they could take like two months before, you know, you, they start to turn peach. And uh, yeah, I mean, you just wait and wait and wait and wait. And you're like, why are you not ripening up? It's <laughs> but once they do, the entire plant starts to turn peach. They produce really pretty peppers that are nice. And, I, you know, sugar rush peach are, are great in, as, a, as, a, as a base for the hot sauce because they have really thick uh, texture. And it's also very sweet. So uh, if you use sugar rush in your hot sauce, you don't have to use sugar because it's, it's very sweet. <laughs> Bradley, no top club. <laughs> yeah, some people don't like topping the peppers. Um, you know, there, there are advantages, but there are also disadvantages. Uh, topping a pepper plant would really set it back. Um, and uh, most of the time when I top my plants, it's the, the, the reason is, I one, I might, I might have started them too early, and then they just grow out of control, and then uh, I ran out of space. So I was like, oh, man, what am I going to do? You know, I, and then <laughs> I just trim them to keep them smaller and then, uh, you know, slow it down a little bit. Uh, Andrew, do I like those dark foliage plants? Uh, yeah, I do. They, you know, some of them, the purple one, the purple foliage, they, they look very pretty. And then the variegated one, like for example, the fish pepper, I grow fish pepper many, many seasons ago. Uh, they, they're super pretty. They, they, and, and then the pink tiger that I grew last season, they, they have purple, white, and, and, uh, what else? Green. And man, they, they just look amazing. Yeah, so I, I do like those variegated pepper plants. Uh, 
Oh, GTF, you save your apple crisp, apple plant. Oh man, that's awesome. You know what? I, I try to, uh, to propagate apple so many times. It, it never worked, but, um, <laughs> I'm glad it worked out for you. Uh, what inspired me to make crosses? Uh, I think because I grow the, you know, my favorite peppers for so long and, uh, you know, I just wonder like, hey, what, what would they taste like if I mix these two together? And that's usually, uh, you know, I, I look for plants that are really pretty, has nice colors, very productive and taste good. And then uh, I take those two and, and cross them together. I think the reason I first started doing that is because I wanted a variety that I can call my own. You know, like I love Scotch bonnet, but you can't, I can't call the Scotch bonnet mine because it's not mine. So, uh, you know, I was like, you know, maybe I can take the Scotch bonnet and cross it with another favorite variety of mine and create a new variety so that I can call it mine. And so that's one of the, my, <clears throat> the reason that it got me to uh, crossing my uh, lemon starburst. Uh, what's on my grow list this year? Uh, okay, my, my grow list this year is going to include, I mentioned earlier that the Jay's Peach goes crossed with the Primo. Uh, I'm going to grow, uh, let's see, the white tie. I always grow white tie every season because my family loves that thing. Um, I think I'm going to grow about 10 of those. <laughs> they usually take out the entire raised bed for, for just the white tie. And I'm going to grow a new, uh, my new variety called the Chocolate Factory because, you know, it, it, it pumps out peppers like a factory. It's just so many pods. <laughs> And, uh, you know, of course, the trio, the Lemon Starburst, the Peach Star Kissed, and uh, the Scarlet Rose, I grow them every season. They're so pretty. When I give it out to people, they, they think they're so unique. Because, uh, you know, a lot of the people that, that, um, that I give peppers to, they're not into peppers. So they don't, they don't know anything about it. But when they look at the pods, they're like, wow, what is this thing? It's so pretty. And so I like to give it out as gifts. You know, I select the best looking ones and I give it to my friends. Uh, Dan, yes. Have you ever seen like salt powder falling from the indoor peppers? Yes. It's called edema. Uh, edema usually is, is crystallized, crystallized particle that is underneath the leaves usually. It's, it's, it's like crystals. And a lot of the times what happens is you lack circulation. So try to in introduce like a, like some air, like a fan or something like that. It, it will help reduce the crystallized particles on your plant. Uh, it's not, uh, it's a problem, but it's not a huge problem. Your plants are not going to die from that. So just try to fix it. All right, Rich, you got some of the chocolate hybrids, man. Yeah, I created a bunch of chocolate hybrids this year. They're just so crazy. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, the, the, one of them I call the chocolate factory because it pumps out pods like a factory. It's just, you know, I couldn't eat the entire, I grew one plant and it, 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 it got really big and there's just hundreds and hundreds of pods. And every time I pull a few off, they, then more flowers form and, and they just, and right now they're, they're dead outside and it still had like over a hundred pods still on it dead. <laughs> Because I couldn't collect them enough, fast enough. <laughs> GTF, I showed my manager Lemon Starburst pot and now I have to give her a plan. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Sharing is caring, you know, so especially as your manager, you know, get some, get some points for giving her <laughs> some pepper plants. <laughs> Uh, when will I share my new crosses? Um, you know what? I, I will soon. I just need to grow it out a little bit more to make sure they're a little bit more consistent. Because, you know, I don't want to give it to you guys. And I was like, guys, it tastes so good. It's chocolate. It produced a gazillion pods. And then when I give it out to people, they're like, King, what kind of crap is this? You, you gave me some crazy. It tastes bad. It didn't produce like you said. You know, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> so I have to grow it out a bunch of times. Like, like for example, this one here, you see here? Believe it or not, guys, these are the same variety that I collected last from the pepper plant outside. It, it's the same one, but look how different they look. So if I have given this to you guys, you'd be like, hey, you told me it, it grows upward. How come this one didn't grow upward? This one grows down. Well, why is that? You know, it's not exactly how you describe it. And so that is the reason why I can't give it out yet. Because, you know, I, ha I have to, you know, have some kind of consistency first. You know, at least something is, 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 is consistent about it. Like maybe the taste, for example. So yeah, I I grow um, I grow four four of these, and uh, three of them look different. Actually, all four of them look different. They all look different. So this is the exact same thing. So uh, yeah, very 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 strange. So uh, that's that's the reason why I don't give people F one pods or F one seeds because, or actually F two. I don't give people F two seeds because. You know, you never know what they're going to get, you know. And so I need to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, they, they look totally different. So, you know, if, if I would have given, hey, GTF, uh, look, th this plant, I'm going to give you seeds for F2. It, it should grow up. It should look like this. It should grow in the cluster. <laughs> and then when you get it, you grow it, it, it looks like this. You're like, hey, man, did you give me the wrong seed or something? It didn't look like that. But, yeah, it's... <laughs> Um, what is the worst pepper I have ever tried? Hmm. Uh, you know, I think most of the peppers that I tried are are are, are good in some way. Uh, you know, I think I think the worst pepper I tried might have been like one of those um ornamental uh, peppers. It's just so bland and no flavor, no taste at all. I forgot what it's called. Um. You know, when you eat it, it didn't have any flavor. It's just, yeah, <laughs> it's just bland and didn't taste like anything. So uh, yeah, I think ornamental peppers are, are just—they don't taste good. Uh, ban everything. You just bought six indoor hydro gardens similar to the Aero Garden. Nice. You're going to be having a lot of fun. <laughs> Growing indoor is, is a lot of fun. I, I, I really enjoy it because, you know, you can get you can get to know your plants very well because, you, you know, you look at it all the time. You, you just work with it. You kind of like start to notice uh, how it grows and the habits and stuff like that. So very interesting. Uh, yes, uh, Steve Rogers, F2 is where recessive traits can re emerge, they say. Yeah, it could be. Uh, F2 is where they're just, you, you never know what you're going to get. It, it's just very strange. You just grow a bunch and pick the one that you like the most. But yeah, you do get many different variations in F2, even F3. Uh, you know what? A lot of people say the same thing as ban everything. If you grow a hot pepper next to a bell pepper, then the bell pepper will be hot. I, I'm, I'm not sure that is the case because if the pe pepper has to be hot, it has to be crossed with that pepper and then you grow out the seeds for the next season and then it will be hot. But the, pe the bell pepper, it, it wouldn't just become hot and, you know, instantly like that. Yeah, I think you have to grow it out. You're like it has to it has to cross successfully and then you have to happen to grow the seed out into the next generation and then that bell pepper could possibly be hot. I think that's how it usually works. But if you grow like a reaper next to um 
a bell pepper, that bell pepper would not automatically become hot just because it grows right next to it. Yeah, because you know it's still the same genetics. I mean, it's the same everything, so it 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 wouldn't just turn hot. Okay, player 7860, does lemongrass work as a good pest repellent if you grow it near peppers? You know what? I, you know, I'm not sure if you followed, but I did that before. I did that. I grew a, a, a lemongrass right next, you know, in the same pot as my pepper to see if it can deter pests. And um, I know for sure that it did not deter um, uh, aphids because the plant still had aphids, but not as many as the other plants. So I, I don't know for sure if it would deter. It could, you know, it could, because, um, you know, aphids, they don't like, uh, you know, herbs like mint or, um, you know, maybe lemongrass or, or uh, people say, uh, what was it, onions. Yeah, they say that if you grow onions around, uh, you know, plants that, that it would deter the bugs from getting onto it. It could be the case, but I don't think it's 100% because I did have onions growing right next to a few of my pepper plants and there were still aphids on there. So maybe a little, but not fully. It's not a, you know, it's not gonna work fully. You know, a, a lot of the things that people write on the internet is a lot of the times is not very true. Uh, for example, uh, I read uh, one time somebody said that if you grow, um, what was it? Gosh, I forgot what the name of the plant is. It's one of the, that it would, uh, it would deter uh, aphids. Man, I forgot what the plant was. And I was like, no, that is not true because I grew that plant and that plant is the one that actually attract the aphids. <laughs> Maybe they, what they were trying to say is this plant will attract aphids away from your other plants. And if that was the case, that, that it is true. Um, but it, you know, if it, they said that it deter aphids, then it's false. <laughs> yeah, marigolds. <laughs> Uh, but it's not marigold. It's something else that I, it's, uh, what was it? Nestur nasturtium. Yeah, that's it. Nest nest is that how you say it? Nasturtium? Yeah, so, so I, I, saw, I saw it was listed as nasturtium is a plant that can deter uh, aphids. And I was like, no, that is not true because I grew that plant and that plant attracted aphids. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so funny, you know. So you know, sometimes you have to, you know, have, you have to find different sources because then you know the, the, they they will list anything. And uh, uh, here's here's another thing that I just I was actually read I read a lot about recently, and it's about uh, you know like uh, don't um, uh, pick your uh, dandelions. Because that that's the first food source for the bees, right? And and I was like, you know, I have a bunch of dandelions in the yard, and uh, the bees do visit, but also I have pears that are you know in the yard as well, and if I have pears, they bloom around the same time as the dandelions, and the bees would go to the pears instead of the dandelions. So you know. I don't know if that's true or not, but but what 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 happens usually is bees. If there's a if you have a, a lot of dandelions, then the bees would often visit that patch because it's easier to get to, and there's a bunch of them in together. Then the bees would just you know go there. But saying that dandelion is the first food source for the bees in the spring. I think that is kind of false because there's a lot of other plants that bloom the same time as the dandelions. But yeah, anyway, I was just reading on that and I was like, mm, I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> but if you if you guys have uh, you know like if you guys know would would love you know the information. 
Uh, yes, lavender is heaven for pollinators. I agree with that because I have lavender and it's just like every uh, summer, there's just bees everywhere on the lavender. Yeah, so I, I can see yeah, that. That is true. And I, I love watching the bees at work. Oh, Brandon, there you go. Maples are the first real food source for the bees. Uh, yes, okay, that's great. You know, I, I, I didn't know. I, I just know that they they visit my pear trees. And, uh, you know, pears, they bloom in the spring. And pears, you know, there's so many flowers on the pear trees. So you're going to see, like, tons and tons of bees. And, um, the, again, the dandelion bloomed at the same time usually as my pears, and that, that, that I noticed. And I think they, they usually go to the pear trees because there's just so many flowers. You know, well, why would you go visit only a few dandelions when you got a whole bunch of, of pears? <laughs> Paul, I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I, I grew up in – you know, watching the 49ers. So, you know, I love the 49ers, but, you know, my heart goes to the Cowboys. So anytime 49ers plays the Cowboys, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for the Cowboys. But yeah, today um, we, we, we talked about it earlier. I'm, I'm hoping I'm, I'm rooting for my boys and we need this win. So, you know, this is, this is one of the better years that we've had in a long time. So uh, Paul, let, let's, let's, we got this, right? <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Yeah, guys, um, lavenders are such beautiful plants to grow. And uh, if you grow them, they, they you know, they, I, I do a lot of trimming because I think every season, for some reason, my lavenders grow and then towards the end of the season, it kind of flop over. And so I have to cut those dead pieces out. But they produce beautiful purple flowers that the bees just love. I mean, the bees just all over my, my lavender. Elder flowers flower early too. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. I'm I'm glad to know that. I I don't think I've grew know what I need to look that up. I don't I really don't know what elder flowers are. <laughs> Bradley, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, my friend. <laughs> Since the Texans are so bad, hopefully one of the teams from Texas would, <laughs> would win something. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm with you on that, Bradley. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm I, I love Texas. So any teams uh, from Texas, is, you know, got my vote when when we have to play other people. It's either the Cowboys or the Texans. So uh, when the Texans play with other teams, I'm rooting for the Texans. You know, <laughs> the, you know. The Texans has gone through a lot of um, uh, <laughs> bad trades, I would say. Man, it's it, it started with uh, my boy, DeAndre. <laughs> but yeah, go go Texans, man. They they need a lot of work to to rebuild the team next year. Worst trade ever. You know, I, I still cannot get over all of the memes that people made about that trade. It's just so funny. I mean, I couldn't believe that was that happened. And um, the funny thing is the year before that, uh, Bradley, the year before that, uh, I had David Johnson on my uh, on my fantasy. And I'm like, oh, God, David, man, you let me down. What happened? You know, you were so good before I drafted you for my fantasy. 
And then, uh, you know, I could not believe all that happened. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, playing fantasy football teaches you so much about, you know, a, a lot of things that you, you would not even uh, think you, you know, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> Man, this, this is funny. We're talking about gardening, football. Uh, some people here talk about UFC sometimes. I'm a huge UFC fan. So I'm into all kinds of stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Rich, I... You know, uh, we had a few flurries yesterday, Rich. It, it dropped down to like 30-something uh, degrees. It was very cold. But we had a few flurries, you know, and it, it, it kind of got our hopes up a little bit. Maybe like, hey, maybe we might see snow. And then five minutes later, it was gone. <laughs> but, yeah, Texas is a, it's very strange. We, we either have um, uh, zero or a bunch of stuff. Like, you know, no snow or like the snow get in. No rain or like rain for like two weeks. <laughs> Flood everything. So uh, that's how we like it down here. Everything is big. <laughs> uh, Michelle, you know what? I was wondering because I grow so much lavender and I don't know what to use it for except uh, people say put it in tea. I think that's the only thing I've done with 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 lavender. I, I want to to know how to use more lavender. I just have a bunch of them. I just don't know what to do with them. But my baby does like the flowers of the lavender, so I always pick it pick it for him. It's kind of sticky too. <laughs> uh, Anthony, best pepper in my opinion. Uh, you know what? That's a tough one because you know there's there's so many good peppers like. Do you want hot peppers or mild peppers or sweet peppers? You know, different categories they have different good peppers. <laughs> Fatalis are great. I, I agree with the pepper guru right here. You know, Rich, I grew your, your yellow fatali that you gave me. I saved some seeds. Um, I started it late. This year, I'm growing it again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it earlier. That, so that, you know, I, I got some really nice pods, but it didn't. It wasn't that, as many as I would like. But Fatalis are great. Fatali, you know, uh, Rich, have you ever tried the Banda Majak pepper? It kind of reminds me of a, of a Fatali, but it's, it's a little smoother. But yeah, I, I really love the Banda Majak pepper. It's a, it's a, it's a cool, cool looking, it's very cool looking pepper. It's bright yellow. It's just beautiful. And uh, yeah, it does have very similar flavor, but I don't think it's as hot as the as the fatali. Uh, I have not tried real bonsai, um, but you know, I I bought a few bonsai plants. It, you know, I didn't know how to take care of it, so <laughs> I need to learn how to do bonsai. The bonsais are so cool looking. Make lavender oil. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I wouldn't even know how to make the the, the oil, but I, I do have a lot of lavender. They, they they're perennial for me. They just grow back every year, and I got a bunch of them. Uh, when will the Fatali be fe featured in my What's the Pepper? You know what? I, I'm so surprised that I haven't had one done yet. Uh, maybe this season coming up. I'm, go I'm going to grow it again because I am growing the Fatali again. I love Fatali. I have uh, the yellow Fatali, which is the, the seeds from the Pepper Guru. I also have the red Fatali and then also the chocolate Fatali. But I think the yellow one's my favorite. Nate, uh, Banda Majak and Banda Mahala. You know what? I only had the Banda Majak. I have not had the Banda Mahala. I, um, I think, I think I've, I've heard of that pepper a, a, a while ago. 
but I, I haven't grown it myself. But the Banamajak, I can confirm that is a great pepper. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dan, have you ever made pepper tincture like uh, the garlic, ginger, and cinnamon? No, I haven't done that. But uh, you know, guys, I infused um, and vodka with peppers, and that is awesome. I made, I use it, I use them to make uh, Bloody Mary. Man, it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll spice things up a lot. I used uh, two. Um, uh, two Jay's Peach goes crossed with a Primo in, in my, uh, you know, like a medium-sized Tito bottle. And wow, that thing is so hot. Yes, Aaron, the, the succulents you gave me, uh, I, I wasn't sure if I can leave it outside in the wintertime, so I brought it inside to my garage. They're still alive and kicking. <laughs> There's, there's there's some succulents that I have uh, like the uh, the ghost plants. I, I'm not sure if I sent you ghost plants, uh, Aaron, but um those are the only one that can survive freezing temperature down to uh, like 12 degrees Fahrenheit, and I don't know why they they have no issues. And every other succulents that I have, when it goes down to freezing temperature, it becomes all mushy and dead. But but the ghost plant, for some reason, they are so super tough. No, no issues with them. But the ones you gave me, Aaron, I brought them inside, so they're good. Hang! <laughs> My friend Hang, you're here. Bradley, you got uh, you grow cracky cilantro. It keeps me in stock. <laughs> you know what the thing about cilantro is? Um, every time you buy them in the grocery store, you you don't use it all, right? And then you waste them. And so growing them yourself is best because you only harvest when you need them, and they just keep growing. And I mean, cilantro just grow amazing in hydroponic. Chris, <laughs> good to have you, Chris. How's Norway right now? Is it is it uh, still freezing cold? Uh, Mighty, am I am I still growing culantro? Yes. You know what? My culantro just died outside uh, when we had the eighteen degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, before that, man, they were thriving. Um, so next year, I'm definitely growing it again. Uh, culantros are great. I love them. I love the crunchy texture of culantro and um, the smell of it. I, I, you know, some people say it smells like soap, but for me, I, I love the smell. It's, it's just so good. <laughs> uh, you have a current whiskey you like. Yeah, um, yes, I do. I have a bunch of them. Uh, uh, there, there is one mighty, uh, the, the Lafroy uh, that I used in my, uh, in, my, in my hot sauce recently. If you, if you, if you like really smoky flavor uh, hot sauce and you don't want to use the liquid smoke, add a few drops of uh, double oak Lafroy. Man, that is amazing. <laughs> mighty, I just let you know my secret. Yep. Uh, don't use liquid smoke. Use a few drops of um, uh, double oak Lafroy. You're going to love it. Uh, this smells amazing. Oh, there you go, Rich. Got to grab a bottle of Octomore. Is that, how you, is that how you say Octomore? 12 series. Super. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll look it up. I mean, you know, I, I'm i a whiskey collector, and uh, I also like to drink it <laughs> occasionally. So I have a, I, I don't have uh, the collection that I I want to have because, you know, 
these days, man, when you want to buy a whiskey, it's, it's almost nearly impossible to get some of the stuff that you, you want. Because um, it's almost like you got to know someone to even get the rare stuff. It's crazy. That's, that's, they, everything is just a an, an huge demand. It, I guess it becomes trendy. So, um, you know, like, for example, if you like bourbon and stuff like that, you're not going to find any of the Buffalo Trace Antique Series. You're not going to find any of the Pappies. You're not going to find any of the Weller unless you know people. So, <laughs> so um, I, you know, years ago when I, when, I, when, I, when I was buying whiskey, like back in 2012, I just go to Total Wine. And I mean, like Hibiki was just like on the shelves. I like, do you want, how many bottles do you need? I was like, I just need one. I mean, but you, you can see like 20 bottles just sitting on the shelf waiting for people to buy it. Nobody wants it. And then all of a sudden, some guy named Bill Murray or whatever, he says Hibiki is the best whiskey in the world. And then 2013 onward, it just flew off the shelf. And now the $59 bottle becomes $159. Ridiculous. But yeah, I used to buy like 12 years of Hibiki, $49.99. Uh, the the seventeen years like you know under a hundred bucks. But now if you if you buy like even the 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 the, the bottom of the line the harmony is already like eighty bucks or something like that. It's crazy. I'm not paying for for that. Just the hype, you know. It, it didn't taste good. <clears throat> Yeah, Scotland is where it's at. <laughs> I do like scotch, man. The, 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 they make amazing stuff. I, I really want to go on that tour, you know, the tour of uh, the whiskey tour in, in, in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, Mighty, the, the pandemic didn't help. You know, people started to stay home, so they get depressed, maybe drink a little bit more. So people are buying stuff, buying everything up. Uh in the the pandemic, the pandemic did a lot of stuff for so many things. Like for example, the uh, the wood prices was ridiculous at one point. You know, I couldn't build any raised beds, so I had to buy metal beds. Guys, anybody experienced that? I couldn't buy any wood to build my 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 broken down raised bed, so I started buying the metal raised beds. <laughs> Ah, oh, man, the pepper guru, you have some good taste, my friend. One of these days, we uh, sit down together and have a drink and, and share stories about your travel <laughs> and peppers. <laughs> Vince, you're, you're so excited to grow my lemon starburst. Yes, I, I'm glad you're growing it. I, I hope you will like it when, when you get um, the peppers to produce. That would be awesome. <laughs> we we, uh, we started with gardening then we got into football and now we're talking about whiskey Alex, red breast is really good yes, I agree with you uh, the 12 is a, is a, it's a very solid line but I like the lo I love the 12 cast strength man, you gotta go with the cast strength Uh, cinder block race beds uh, those are the easiest to make except the at the at the, at the one time the wood was wasn't uh, so cheap so i couldn't build any more of those christopher uh, join us with some cognac yes chris is a, a cognac connoisseur um chris i i you know I, you, you still need to show me pictures of those uh, co you know of your cognac collection cuz um you have some good stuff, right? <laughs> Look at Jimmy. Jimmy, jewel of Russia for vodka and whistle pig for, for whiskey. Isn't whistle pig is source whiskey from Canada, isn't it? Yeah, I, I have a co-worker that loved the, the whistle pig. Suhail, 
Good to have you here, my friend. I recognize your name. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Guys, the, the, the Cowboys are going to play soon. Are, are they playing already? Let me check. I'm supposed to be watching that game with, um, with some folks. Um, see, Victoria, you, you have a Trinidad yellow scorpion uh, plant that's making a lot of flowers, and I water daily. Uh, okay, so there, there's that's one that could be your problem right there, Victoria. If you water your plants daily, it's not a good thing. Uh, is this in soil, right? I, I, I mean, I guess I assume it's soil because you water daily. So, uh, peppers do like water, but they don't like wet feet. So what that means is you cannot water daily. You give it a thorough water. Make sure the soil is moistened up nicely, and then don't water again until the water the soil is dry again. Uh, if you water all the time, what happens is like it's the same thing as if you if you stay in the in the tub for too long, your your, your finger will start to wrinkle. Right, you're gonna you kind of stress out. It's it's not a good thing. So plants do breathe underneath the soil, and so the roots if the roots are always wet all the time, and I mean wet then they're going to have problems. They're going to drop flowers. They're going to, the leaves are going to turn yellow. They're going to have spots and then the leaves will eventually fall off. So don't water daily. Just give a nice thorough water. And then don't water, don't do that again until the soil be, becomes semi-dry. You don't want it completely dry because if soil is completely dry and then when you water it, what happens is the, the, the water will run off. Run off meaning it runs somewhere else besides the root. And then you're like, hey, how, how come my plants are dry right now? I just watered it yesterday. And the reason is because it probably ran off, it ran off because the, the soil is too dry. So you don't want too dry soil, but you also don't want too wet soil. You know, nice and moistened roots are perfect. So yeah, don't water every day. If, if it's in your tent and, uh, you know, you keep it a nice temperature, you probably don't have to water, but once every four days or five days, maybe. Mm -hmm. There you go. Shahib, you're right. And, and, you know, watering every day could cause potential problem in diseases, too. Allison! <laughs> Uh, thanks for dropping by. If you have to leave, I'm glad you're here before you leave. <laughs> uh, what about seedling watering? Same exact thing, Vince. You want the soil to be nice and moistened, uh, but, you know, like, like for example, like, imagine this, right? If you take a, a chunk of soil in your hand and you squeeze it, you should feel that your hand is slightly, uh, has some moisture. But water should not be dripping out. If water is dripping out of your hand when you squeeze your soil, that is just too much. That is way too much, and you cannot have that. So imagine if you if you your soil as a as hold it in your hand and squeeze it, and if you have a little slight wetness in your hand, that is perfect. If you have water dripping out of the soil, that is just too wet. So just imagine that way. Uh, do you run your grow like 24 seven? No, uh, I think I talk about this subject many, many times. Uh, it's always best to mimic, mimic man, mother nature. Do not run your life 24 seven. I, you know, there's many people that says that you should run your, your life 24 seven. And, uh, my opinion, of course is my opinion. I think you're wasting energy. You're just wasting electricity for no benefits. Uh, because in nature, you know, you have your days and your nights. There's nothing better than mimicking nature. So try your best to mimic it. Um, the most I run my life is 10 hours on and 14 hours off. That's 24 hours. I never run it over 10 hours, regardless of what plants it is. Every single plants that I grow, 10 hours on, the rest off. 
So I never run it over 12. But, you know, you can run it over 12. 12 is great because, you know, in some places that, you know, you have your day life, it runs for 12 hours. So, you know, just just picture where you live and, and how much light you have in your days and how much light you have in your night. Just set it like that. But don't don't run 24 hours. You're just wasting energy for no reason. There's no benefits. And the reason why there's no benefits is the plants don't sleep, but at nighttime, it 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 uh, what what the plants do is they they focus the energy on something else, like fighting off pests, for example. So uh, at night, the plants does different things. You know, they they do different things. So they they could be focusing energy on fighting pests and all that stuff like that. So if you you turn it on twenty four seven, and when the lights on, the, the plant is producing food. For example. So if you if you do produce food twenty four hours, you know there's kind of a problem right there. It's just it's just don't just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, adjust your you know yeah. It's it's really strange. People just say run your lights twenty four seven is better for the plants. It's not better for the plants. You know it just makes no sense uh, to run it twenty four seven. Uh, let's see. Daily light interval is a is a thing as well. Daily light interval? I don't know. I you know mine is on a timer. It's always ten hours on and everything off forever and ever. <laughs> All throughout the season, I don't I don't change it. So I said it one time and that's it. Keep it simple, guys. You know, because you know you can dial it in and make it as complicated as you have time for. But for me, I I want to keep things simple. You know, if I set it on it. 10 hours on, 14 hours off. It's 10 hour on, 14 hour off for the entire year. Yeah, I, I don't change my settings. Uh, is it a good thing? Probably not, <laughs> but, but it's easy. <laughs> yes, 12 is okay. 12, you know, 12 is fine. 10 to 12 is good, but I think more than that is not that great. Uh, you're just wasting energy. Uh, I, I don't think the lights on and off is, is going to affect your pollination. Pollination, uh, if you're growing peppers, they, they self-pollinate. So they will produce pollen and they would the pollen would drop and uh, it, they would just pollinate themselves. Uh, if you're growing inside, you don't need a pollinator. All you do is shake the plant. Like say, for example, uh, here, like you have flowers right here and uh, you want to pollinate it, go like that. <laughs> That's it. Go like this. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't even have to do that because if you look at the the the, the flower anatomy, the center little thing, the, the little pointer, that's your stigma. It's surrounded by little pistons or or, or the you know the, the parts that make pollen, and when the pollen becomes dry enough, it it drops right onto the stigma. So even if you don't do anything, it is still pollinate itself. So. It's not that difficult to pollinate peppers, so don't don't buy the toothbrush that goes. Zzz. <laughs> you know they they sell these little bees like um what is it the the Aragard Aragard sells this little bee looking thing where you can go and like kind of tickle the flower, <laughs> and I think it's so funny that people actually buy that because it, it is such an unnecessary cost of fourteen dollars like. You don't need to spend that $14. It's just a ridiculous waste of money. And it, it's just so funny that, you know, they sell those and people buy them. But yeah, don't, don't buy those things. Just save your money for something else. Just uh, when you need to pollinate your flower, just, just shake it, you know. Uh, do I no longer use clay pebbles? I use clay pebbles, but the thing is I ran out. Um, Sometimes, you know, the, the, the clay pebbles fall and I just trash them and they're somewhere. And um, if I have them, I use them. I put them on top of my rock wool and it does prevent the rock wool from getting algae. It, do, it does help. So if you have pebbles, use it. Um, if you don't have it, don't use it. it, it you don't need it. <laughs> 
you, you know, you, I, I'm telling you, you uh, when if you want to pollinate peppers, even tomatoes, you don't need anything. Just go like this. Or shake it. Just go buy your plant and just shake it. That's all you need. You don't need electric toothbrush. You don't need the, the pollinating bee. You don't need uh, any uh, uh, utility or anything like that. It's just, it's just you're spending more money for what it's worth. You don't need that. <laughs> be the bee. Yeah, be the bee. I think they call it be the bee. <laughs> Very good uh, marketing, but yeah, yeah. Uh, peppers and uh, peppers for for example, peppers, uh, tomatoes. They sell pollinate. Again, they sell pollinate. Uh, no need for um, uh, electric toothbrush or a bee or the be the bee. Uh, I think it's just uh, just just shake the plant a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. Uh, fourteen dollars for a kilogram of blood meal and bone meal. You know what? I, I'm not sure uh, how. Let's see. What's what's? <laughs> I wish that we would use a uh, kilogram and gram instead of pound and all that stuff. It's so confusing for for so many people. And for me too, you know, when people ask me, uh, "What is one kilogram as in as opposed to one pound?" So that's two point two pounds, fourteen dollars. You know, I, I'm not sure how much it's supposed to cost. Uh, Brandon asked if, if anybody uses springtail to help with mold. You know what, Brandon? Funny you asked that question. Uh, I use springtail to control the algae in my bottle. You know, when I do the uh, the uh, the plant, the pepper plant in in the whiskey bottle, uh, I did a bunch of videos on that. I grew pepper plants in a whiskey bottle, and um, I noticed that the bottles that had uh, springtails in there had no algae, but the bottle without the springtail, I can see algae growing on the, on the side of the bottle because the bottle is clear. But yeah, uh, springtail did, did eat up all of the algae for me. Very interesting. Uh, all right, guys. It is three thirty now, so I'm gonna uh, yeah, I'm gonna get going. But uh, it's great talking to you all. Thank you for asking all the questions and joining me on a, a Sunday. So um, yeah, uh, we'll try to do this again and uh, uh, reserve time to answer more questions. So anyway, see you guys again next time. <laughs>